to Vegas for a Hojo wedding. There you are all of my life. We're live. We're not actually live. Dang. We're recording. Alive. We're live in the flesh. <laughs> We're a live. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Welcome. 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 To Retro Lab Records Podcast. I'm Matthew. And I'm Caleb Reed. This is Caleb. And today we have... Jason. Wait, no, I'm Drew. I'm sorry. You're Drew. <laughs> I'm so times So, first, Drew and explain Jason, that, man. then. What is your name? <laughs> what it is really is, name? It really is Drew. I don't... Jason was just random. Oh. I don't know, yeah. okay. Sometimes <laughs> like, I have... Jason. I have... I think I'm someone else Tourette's. And it just... Yeah. <laughs> okay, so Drew. Yes. Drew. It happens and, randomly. I'm sorry. And your project is Drew's, Drew's Peace, Peace Crush. Crush. It's Drew with two O's. Drew's Peace Crush. Rolls right off the tongue. Nice. So it's so easy. Very nice. <laughs> it's, such a, nice. it's a terrible. It's a terrible. No, it's not. No, no. no. <laughs> Did you chant? Is your name? Is it actually two O's? Your yeah. Name? yeah. Oh. Well, no, no, no. no, no like not on my birth certificate. No, no. Oh, okay. My parents yeah. aren't that hip. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that was, I mean, your parents would have been. Yeah. Yeah, cool. I like that. <laughs> it's almost like uh, it's almost like um, what is it? Um, um the Droogie. The Droogs. <laughs> like Droogs. Droogs from the Clockwork Orange. Yeah, Clockwork Orange. Orange. You the guys Droogs. are going to judge me so hard right Droogs. now. I've never uh, seen that movie. Uh, never seen I've it? Never seen uh, it. It's great. Yeah. It's a great movie. It is it's a, Stanley Kubrick. I know. I know. Okay, okay. I know. At least just, you know. I just yeah. haven't seen it. Yeah. Yeah. I know. I've never seen The Godfather. Me neither. I've never seen The Godfather. It's on Netflix. I actually just watched it. It's on Netflix. Pretty good. It's available everywhere. Yeah. All those classics. There's no like them yes. out. They yeah. don't the TV. They've got extra copies. VHS is so everywhere. On every plane you ever get on. <laughs> <Shame. it's> on. <laughs> I still haven't watched it. That is awesome. <laughs> Another one. Uh, we'll go. I'll go off. Yeah, yeah, I know. I'm, I'm such, I'm such a movie seen. lover, though. It hurts me when I've not seen some of these. <laughs> yeah, like I, it, it's offensive to myself. Yeah. yeah, you feel even more guilty because you love movies. You're like, I'm always watching. That was shit. Like, yeah. why did I watch that? Why did I watch that? I I why did I watch that, that one with The Rock and the disaster? What yeah. Instead of. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Skyscraper. You saw that one? Yeah. <laughs> Is that even out? I don't think so. Yeah. I don't know. Oh yeah, it's on The TV. Rock. I mean, that could be any it rock could be movie. Any, yeah. Yeah. Really, any Tornado, movies, whirlwind, <laughs> hurricane, <laughs> all of them. earthquake, space thing. <laughs> yeah, right. Rampage. I might just have to watch Rampage for fun. I there actually kind of the video game. It's gonna be terrible. I mean, I mean, Rampage. Yeah. That one's out. That one's already out. You can look at that. I know. Yeah, you're right. All right. Uh, let's get into. This. Let's get. Into this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So. Uh, are we here again? <laughs> yeah, right. How did you start Drew's Peace Crush? What it's did you Jason's know? Peace Crush? Jason's. Jason's. Jason. You need to just cross that out. <laughs> Jason. My, art, my <laughs> artist would not get it. Okay, Drew's Peace Crush. It. I did. I really didn't start it. I started. I used to play bass in my twenties. I'm. I'm old as fuck. Just for the record. I used to play, <laughs> used to play bass in my twenties, and I played for a bunch of different artists and bands. And there was this one band I was in for like ten years, and I was like, we had a bunch of almost. You know, you almost got signed. Almost got signed. You know label flies you out and you have the, they whine and dine you whatever but we just it was always almost we never it never clicked and went through some members but um that band broke up around the time i was like 29 30 and i was like i just want to and i learned how to make a living playing bass but i hadn't learned how to make but i was tired of depending on everybody else as a bassist you have to wait for them to book the stuff you gotta you know you gotta like you're making a, like a third of what they're fucking making probably you know like just a lot of things and just I was like no I'm gonna do my own thing so I started but I was like I didn't want to do anything original I was very frustrated with myself as a writer and it hadn't gone anywhere in my 20s anyway so I was like what's the point you know original music so I was like I'm gonna do acoustic guitar I'm gonna do cover songs I'm gonna play little bars and shit whatever I'm gonna make my money I'm gonna go home and live a simple life and that's it that's all I want to do for the rest of my life um, so, so that was my, yeah, yeah, so that was, m that was my initial goal, and here, there's a, now here I am, there's two vinyls, but we've been listening to one, but yeah, like, <laughs> yeah. of original music with a seven-piece band, but it just, uh, it didn't, it just didn't go as planned, I got very bored with cover music after four or five years, um, and started getting opportunities to be booked as a band or like maybe with just drums and bass and so i started finding needing to find players that would play with me at first 
few years it was just players, but then it started being like this drummer and bass player that were always with me. And then um, the drummer switched out, but he was another drummer that was like part of the band. And we didn't have a name or anything. And then my fiddle player was actually my first member. I met her like one of my first shows. Um, but just it's just been organic over the years. But we have we have sax, fiddle, bass, drums, lead guitar, keyboards, and myself. I play acoustic and sing. So that's awesome. a lot of stuff. It's a big sound. So just out there playing live a lot. You've kind of made. You've just met a lot of different people. Yeah, it's it really was like um, fiddle player was definitely playing a live show. She started jamming with me at a, like a dead bar that I was playing out like on a random Tuesday. And she's been with me 10 years. She's been with me the longest. Wow, and cool. she's loyal and so good. And um, and then, like, drummer bass player I met at a restaurant I happened to be playing at. And they were together hanging out. And yeah, just pretty much open mics. I host open mics, met them, you know, through that kind of stuff. My keyboard player, that. My, my lead guitar player, just through open mic. And you're a, ba you're a bassist, but did you learn guitar? Did you become. What was first? When did. P actually piano. I was four. Oh, My dad wow. started teaching me piano. Very cool. And uh, and I was probably the best pianist I ever was at about ten. And I was <laughs> and uh, and then I kind of got I was tired of it. I wanted to learn guitar and other things. So I started learning guitar. And then around fourteen, I was in this tiny church. I was in the west. Coast. I'm from the west coast. And I was living in Oregon. Then we were in this tiny town, this tiny church. My dad did all the music. He would lead all the worship music and play piano and he's like, I want a bass with it. And so he like bought me a bass and an amp. He's like, fucking love bass. <laughs> well yeah, he didn't say that. He didn't say that. <laughs> I mean no. <laughs> but basically basically is what I mean, mean bass. Yeah. Um, but he, yeah, <laughs> that's what I was like, like here, fucking learn bass. I was like, okay. <laughs> it's like, well, I guess so. So I did and and played along with him for a few years and then I majored in it in college. I had nothing I had no idea what I wanted to do with my life. And I was like, yeah, I'm major in bass. And I got an associate's degree, and then I started finding opportunities to play, and I never looked back. That's awesome. That's cool. That's yeah. Cool. But it was, it, bass was probably my foundation where, like, even as a guitar player, I incorporate so much of that. Because I, I, oh, I, I, I studied it so hard and yeah. and played it for so many years. You know? Bass is such a interesting, an interesting instrument to play. It's not only just a supporting act, but you sit before, behind the groove, you're meshing with the drummer. It's you're just, the glue. You're the glue. You man. absolutely it's, are the glue. Yeah, and man, it is, it, it's, a, it's definitely different jumping from, you know, guitar to bass. It's it's not, it's not the same, man. It's it isn't. No, I know guitar <laughs> players try, well, see, I ended up becoming, I ended up being a busy bass player, because I'm when I majored in bass, it was all jazz, walking yeah, lines. Right. And so I, I thought... Must, most most school music is jazz, right? Yeah, and yeah. Which basically exactly, and I love that because yeah. you, you kind of learn beyond what you'll actually need for commercial music, right. yeah. but you can always incorporate that. And I do incorporate a lot of stuff I learned in jazz music into my music, and I'm glad because I think the musicality of stuff that's out there is so much trash. Like you know, like people need to be really stretching themselves, not like in in every capacity. You know, like stretch yourself musically stretch yourself sonically stretch yourself as a player stretch yourself as a singer stretch yourself you know just always pushing and um, I think a lot of people tend to take the lazy route and the like like I even know a lot of God love them just incredible just fucking incredible musicians in the area in the Dallas area that like they will they, I've in in their twenties and their younger years, I've watched them. I have played with them, and like they've made some really kick-ass like rock music or or different genres of music, pop music, yeah. and whatever. And they'll just like almost like almost like an older person like settles into a routine just because like they'll just like get older like settle yeah. into. It tends to be Texas country music just because yeah. it's easy to make money playing country music here. And everybody wants to hear it, and it's simple to play. It really is. Yeah. It's simple. It's pocket. I won't. I won't deny that. Country music yeah. pocket. It's pocket as fuck, and I, that's one of the things I like about it. It's simple. And it's pocket. But it's like these musicians could be instead of falling just into another like, let me copy something that's kind of simple. Yeah. yeah. Let me let me challenge it instead with my writing and challenge the genre and challenge and cross genres and stuff. You know, like. And that's for me as an original artist. That's what I always want to be doing. That's it. Like evolving. Yeah, and evolving. and we'll, and 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 not putting it in myself in a box. 
not even saying I'm gonna be this kind of music. Like, yeah. you know, just music. <laughs> you yeah, know? Yeah, that's it, man. Whatever vibes, whatever feels, yeah. whatever grooves. That's, man, that's, that's the passion of music for. Uh, Especially like an original artist. Here, I'll get off my soapbox now. There we go. It's like ranting for like five no. minutes. Like you guys are just like, what is he gonna fucking shut up? No, no. Trust me, that's, that's what we, we prefer you to talk. We don't want to hear ourselves talk. Yeah, no, um, what, what artists influence you the most? What are some of your favorite artists? Um, um, I mean, really, like, two hard, hardcore ones are Michael Jackson and Prince, always. But th that's not to say that my music sounds like that, but <laughs> at all, you know, but influence, like, where it just, where I, w it's, it's something I would strive to on a talent level, be producing something on their level. Not even it sounds like them, but, you know, right. on their level. This is yeah. inspiration um, and influence. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Um, but, I mean, it goes well beyond that. A lot of the, a lot of 70s stuff, a lot of my nostalgic stuff. Mm -hmm stuff I listened to when I was a kid. Like, my parents, I had a very kind of, like, churchy upbringing and a little, a little shelter musically. So, basically, what my parents had record collection-wise was, like, cheesy Christian records. <laughs> and, and then, like, some stuff that they bought before they were into cheesy Christian records. So, it was, like, <laughs> so it was typically, like, like, 60s and 70s, kind of, like, groovy stuff. Like, some rock and roll. Um, but disco even like and I would just like I have a song on this record called vinyl That's really about kind of throws back to that, my nostalgic years of just like being a kid and like Having huge, you know can headphones on like with a turntable and like plugged in this big old Wendy cord, you know like, <laughs> like like quarter-inch cable and everything and just awesome. putting on these records and listening to like I mean stuff like Kenny Loggins and <laughs> like, oh like, and like Christopher Cross <laughs> but like, but then even like Earth, Wind, and Fire, Commodores, stuff like that, and then uh, Chicago, um, and uh, and quite honestly, that's probably where more of my influence pulls from when you listen to my music, is that kind of stuff. But then but there's also kind of like some '80s pop influence in there. I really dig a lot of '80s pop music, stuff like The Cure, Tears for Fears, and you know shit like that. Um, and then. And then 90s rock, because that was my teenage years, was 90s rock, and like that was a huge part of like, you know, I mean, Weezer and Nirvana were like, yeah. like gods to me forever. <laughs> so that's awesome. Man. That's cool. So, so that's, I think you hear more of that influence, and maybe a little modern, because I listen to a lot of modern music, like Bruno Mars, and, and I'm totally into Post Malone. Childish Gambino is fucking my shit up. Have you heard his, like, do you guys listen to him? Yeah, yeah. He is sonically yeah. like... He's great. He is, oh my god, he is doing, he is beyond his time already. Yeah, he's all over the place. He's all over the place, it is. It is, it almost could be considered chaotic, but I, yeah. I get it yeah. when I listen to him, like, he That's takes cool. me, he takes me places. He um, but I like even just like pop, Katy Perry and, and, you know, maybe, maybe Taylor Swift, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> but I like a lot of the bands that, that sound like pop music too, like Phoenix and Foster the People and. Time's kind of like an 80s throwback band, and I love Ed Sheeran. I don't know, just I, I like a lot of the modern stuff too. So it kind of mixes all of that. That's cool. Big mix. My influence. Yeah. yeah, right. Mm -hmm. That is pretty cool. Man. What's uh, what's the best show you've ever seen? Um, pro so Counting Crows has been one of my longtime favorite, like all-time favorite bands. I've seen them maybe ten times, and some of those shows are just like mind blowing, like. Maybe one of their shows, but but I'd have to say probably a close first over one of their shows is Imogen Heap. Do you know who she is? Yeah. Fru Fru or Imogen Heap. And yeah, she did the... She had the song like the, the hip-hop artist took and blew up. They're like, where are we? What the hell the, is going on? Yeah, oh, what you say? Wow, oh, no you really know? Yeah. yeah. That's so, crazy. Uh, she is so artsy and i saw her at granada like a oh, decade wow. ago yeah so rad such an intimate <laughs> setting to see her. yeah That's yeah really such crazy. an intimate awesome. setting to see her in and she had like a two she was like her and two other pe band members like a little kit player and then a guy that played guitar some keys some did differently but they'd use all these different things to make different noises like whirly thing, woo, woo, like <laughs> and she had microphones on her wrists Whoa. and 
and she does because she does all this trippy shit in her music with like with with vo her vocals and wow. and she's so, she's one that's ahead of her time too I think yeah, her stuff crazy. her is another one that like people could consider chaotic but like for me I'm I get bored easily as a musician so I want them sonically to take me places like I want them yeah. to like you know I want to hear kind of crazy thing after crazy thing after crazy thing still a structure right. it's like it's still yeah thing. yeah so that was a really bad show and the other thing I loved about it was she um she was she's super artsy like very like and she's from england you know and like whatever and I, and and i just expect i don't know what that means that sounds super like really <laughs> and she's from england yeah like no but <laughs> but no like she just she's i just expected her to be like very kind of like you know like all she'd be like is like his next song is love <laughs> you know, just kind of like very like chill yeah. and like not say much, whatever. She was so funny and down to earth. Really? Yeah, cool. She would like stop herself in the middle of the song, and be like, "Oh, we're, I fucked that verse up. We're gonna start over on that." And like she's like, <laughs> she's like, and she was just like laughing herself and like was so quirky, and that That's like cool. really helped me enjoy the show even more too. It was like That's the music cool. and then like her quirkiness, and I was like, "That's right." Like Probably she could, like almost be herself on stage. Yes, yeah. Was yeah. Just, it was like you were hanging out with her in her living room. Yeah, and that's she was just cool. yeah. playing. That, that gives it, and you know, acting that way with uh, a bigger and even bigger crowd, like helps yeah. bring that intimacy. Yeah. yeah. When you're not all shoved together in a small space, right? Like, which is just naturally <laughs> occurring. <laughs> like we're pretty tight in here. Yeah. We feel close, <laughs> but yeah, it's cool when you just have that relaxed feeling. of of, I don't know, it's almost like a party you're invited to. By exactly. I a private party. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Right, I yeah. went and saw uh, King Gizzard and the Lizard Wizard. <laughs> I've heard of them. Yeah. yeah. I saw I them, the and they, they set up their own stuff. I just thought that was cool that, like, there wasn't some really big reveal. Like, they even came out in the middle of their opening band set and, like, messed with them. It was just, like... It was like you were at a party that they were having or something. Yeah. I don't know. It wasn't so much like we are the rock stars. Yeah, it's where they come out. The there's a there's a place for that though. That's fun yeah. to it be is, yeah. like, oh, you know, they're fine. Yeah. You know, the build up, the anticipation. It's not to hate on it at all, but it was cool. It was like I said, it was just kind of cool to see from her, and I was a little unexpected because I just was like I said, expecting a very kind of like yeah. dark kind of York or something like that. Like yeah. Someone who's a little just like like, like a <laughs> like you're going to see. What's her name? The Bjork or something. You know, like, it's yeah. weird. Like, yeah. I thought it was going to be weird, just kind of, like, awkward. And yeah. Was, like, fun. <laughs> <laughs> That's, cool, right? That funny, um, That's her name, right? What's that? The Bjork? Bjork. Bjork. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Bjork. Like the, the, the one. Two dots. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> like the two dots. Bjork. Bjork. Bjork fan? Tanner? No. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> She's like, oh, what? <laughs> okay. <All right. laughs> We'll go next next one. Um, oh, <laughs> what? I don't know what I'm saying. Your artwork. <laughs> this is artwork. these are some beautiful records. Dude, man. thank you. <laughs> I know, uh, right? How did you get these done? Take yeah. us through the process, the process of actually your first one. Okay. So yeah, this is the first record. This came out in 2016. Um, so I have a good relationship with Josie Records, and. Uh, and like we did our record release show for this record there and we played there for record store day like a year and a half ago in april um they had a big lineup whatever but i've known the owners and like just so i have a good relationship with them i wanted to press with them but they weren't ready when we pressed this so i pressed this to some random company that was out of japan and like it took a long time for this shit to get to me and i was always kind of worried but it all worked out and it panned out fine <laughs> That's cool. but uh we have actually very few copies of this vinyl left i only do vinyl and downloads you can find all our music right. online. how many did you in, or, i only did a hundred of this first that? round yeah, yeah. Okay. so we're getting close to being out of these um that's not to say much i've probably given away most <laughs> <laughs> But then this one, Josie, Josie was just not ready when we, when we pressed that one. They pressed, they just bought it and they hadn't, they weren't up and running. But this one, we just released in February and we had it pressed. Uh, I started like November of last year, the process, and we pressed with Josie. And um, yeah, it's the the artwork. I usually have an idea already in mind, but then I have this artist I use in Denton. His name is Bob Headland. I'm gonna go ahead and plug him. Illinois and Back Design. IllinoisBackDesign.com. You can look him up. Um, uh, he does incredible work, like as you can see from all this. Yeah. Shit. Like, just so I give him, I give him a basic idea, and then he runs with it. Um, so like on this one, I just had the idea of because it's called the War for Love, like the torn heart. 
and um, and then like on the back side like look like they're pulling it from yeah. each side kind of like yeah. yeah anyways that was all I cool. kind of had for the and then I said I gave him a bunch of pictures I was like do what you want in the middle you know whatever but I just have the people pulling it and then, then that kind of being the thing really and so then he did his magic with that one and this one I had the idea I just said like I wanted the cover to be like a like look like a 70s vintage like beach t-shirt that you might get somewhere you know like and I didn't even know I didn't even actually want yeah, us on right. it at all but yeah. he put little representations of all of us which is kind of cool. oh okay but That's yeah cool. like I just said like seven like I just kind of pictured it like that and this is called 79 That's playlist cool. um and then everything else and then I wanted that I knew I wanted the back cover because this is my console mm. uh record player Very at home cool. that cool. had a professional picture taken of I wanted that as the back but I love what he did here like he made each side look like it's a, a its own record uh, cool. sleeves sitting on the you know yeah. on, the, on the fucking thing and then, I was gonna assume that. yeah and you see the titles of the songs and then the inside I love the, the picture you chose but over here was great like because back in the day you'd buy a record and it would like advertise other projects you know and he made it look like we have all these other projects like so, like, oh, so he just it. made it look like he made yeah, it up. that's yeah. cool yeah he made it up <laughs> so cool he, and so like I said that he runs awesome. with it that's he's fun. he's very creative a guy um, that's cool. And he charges fair prices, but yeah, Bob Headland, cool Illinois, back too. Oh yeah, the like labels, the labels on, the labels the labels on yeah. this one are my favorite thing because because we're jamming so, one right now. We're jamming one, but yeah. So so this tattoo I've had for a long time, and I did a vinyl because I love vinyl. I'm a vinyl junkie. You know? <laughs> um, and uh, and there was no particular record I want. I knew of that I wanted to put like an actual label on my tattoo on myself. I was like, there's just so many great records. Like, how am I going to pick one label to put on there? You know? So I put a crow and that was kind of just to represent counting crows because I've always loved them too. And, but that's not like one of their labels, but it was nobody's actual label. But when I made this record, I made all the, each side, there's four sides, um, tattoos that I have. And then that ended up being one of the labels. Oh, that's <laughs> cool. So there it is now. That is actual cool. thing. Very nice. So yeah, I definitely wanted that That's one, awesome. but then like this is the one. This is our logo, but I have it there. Oh, dude. And then uh, awesome. there's two more of my tattoos are on those two labels. But yeah, That's I was like, awesome. I want them all to represent my yeah. That's, That's cool. That's a few one cool of them's idea. that, and then one of them's a California bear. I don't even know if you can see it on the back of my neck. Kind of oh, yeah. Yep. Yeah. That's the, what we're listening to right now. Yeah. That's the side we're listening to. That is awesome. Um, and how many of these? 100? No, I did 150 more? of those. 150, okay. And, but they only will do a minimum of 300 of the artwork. So I did 150 of the actual vinyls mm. that they packaged. There's still another 150 of my artwork sitting at there. If I, so if I ever run out, I will only have to press the vinyls. Oh, okay. Those, yeah. yeah. That's awesome. So, but they, they did a good price, too. They did, Josie did really good prices there. That's awesome. That's good. What yeah. about like uh, like the recording process for each one? Were they same? Were they different? Same place? Different same places? place. Um, kind of similar. We um, I went to the same place because the the guy gets our sound and he doesn't. Mm. He's a, he's a brilliant engineer. He's two time Grammy winner for mixing. He's a brilliant mixer, and um, he's got all the best equipment. He actually has tape too. I wish oh, I could record tape. the tape. It's just so expensive. <laughs> It's cool, so man. expensive, but yeah, it, it's nothing like it. But uh, but uh, real time audio in Denton. The guy's name is Eric Delgard. He runs it. He engineers it. But he can. He's a genius and just the nicest, coolest guy to work with. So awesome. he did our first one, and I just really liked it because there were some things that like, like I said, once again, I like to challenge things. I like to come in and say we're gonna do this, and when people tell me you can't do that, I'm almost like. That all the more makes me be like, no, I can't yeah. do that. Like, right. <laughs> like this is art. It's right. music. No one can tell you what to do. Like, right. it's art. You can yeah. do whatever you want. So, exactly right. and that's what I think art should be. You're never gonna challenge, do something different unless you try to yeah. do something different. Don't you know. It. Yeah. So he he he's pushed against a couple things, but he's always been really cool about pretty much just like make giving making us sound the best we possibly can for what we are, not trying to change us or like right. you can't do this. We're not gonna do this. Yeah. You know. And let us kind of develop. So the first one was a little more developmental, but the second one we went in a lot more knowing what we were doing. And um, and I'm going to go back to him for the third. I'm going to do a third record. That's awesome. Do a trilogy. Yeah, and, so cool. and then maybe retire to van life. Not like anyone's caring about the music, but at least I did something. <laughs> I, I'm proud of these projects. I'm proud of the art. You know, like it's something. It's like this third record is going to be on a whole different level. And um, 
probably hear a lot more modern influence in the new record. Uh, a lot more hard hitting beats and um, and harder pop feel to it. But uh, it's gonna be yeah. something special to you too. I mean, we lit re release. We're not. We don't have the band together anymore. But yeah, we released song, one yeah. album and. It's like we never pressed any vinyl, but we're like, man, we would like to get that on vinyl just for just ourselves, like, yeah. <laughs> just to have for ourselves. Yeah. That's why I do it. Yeah, I don't really do it expecting to sell them, yeah, and I right. don't, I don't go into the pr purchasing them being like, I'm gonna get this money back. Yeah, I yeah. pay for it. I pay it. I pay it out. Like, and you get a hundred out there. You got a hundred and fifty. Yeah. You know, yeah. like there's just, yeah, cool. you know, who knows yeah. that will go to or be passed over yeah, to. It. Exactly. <laughs> it's, yeah, it's, it's super cool. It's physical. Yeah. It's, it's physical, but it, it is for me. It's, it is for me. So, it's like, uh, 20 years from now, someone will be like, he blew this from 79? Like, yeah, right. <laughs> I have no <laughs> fucking clue. Dude, right? bro, they were way out of their time. Like, dude, way that was 2018. Dude, time. same thing. That was so <laughs> long thing, ago. Bro, that was so long ago. <laughs> <laughs> That's crazy, man. Um... <laughs> Are the same members in in both in both uh, in both albums, or <laughs> members change, fluctuate from so one to two? So here's here's what it is. This is this is the band minus him. Okay. It's not being racist either. It's no. not very, <laughs> but, but no, he quit. Actually, quit um, last like about, about a year ago, okay. on his own terms and whatever. Um, he what did he play? He so we used to have uh, he would play. If you listen to the record, there's there's acoustic drums on there. There's bass, there's electric guitar, there's acoustic guitar, there's fiddle, um, keyboards, and then there's this electronic hand drum. He played a little, like, it was called a hand sonic, Roland hand sonic. Uh -huh. And he was, he did shit on that and, like, no one's doing. Like, he really was very, very, like, kind of a virtuoso on it. But so you hear these electronic beats along with the acoustic beats, yeah. and they're meshed together. Oh, and wow. that's what, so that's what he played. Um, for future, I really still want to have that because it brings a pop element to our music that we don't you don't get otherwise having like electronic drums. So, so my drummer is already um, going to be purchasing his own pad that he'll incorporate himself, cool. and it'll work better because they they used to kind of butt heads anyways. Um, he well he butted heads. It was just he was a head butter. <laughs> <It's> <laughs> he was just a head butter. <laughs> you gotta find the right people to work. Now and so so now we replaced him. So we were a seven piece, then we were a six piece for like a minute. But see on this record. Um, actually, on even on that last song you heard, there was a little bit of saxophone. We had okay, sax yeah, on like four songs on this record, very nice. and he was never like an official member. But I just wanted like that that flavor in the album. And now uh, the band talked about it like shortly after after he quit, and we we're all like, if he wants to, like we'd love to have him as a member. So I talked to him about it, and he's been on board now. That's so cool. yeah. So now we still have the seven, and <clears throat> beautiful thing about it too, once again. Non racist, he's a black guy too. <laughs> <laughs> Just no. fits right in. Actually, it's funny because, like, I, I, lo something I love about my band is the diversity. Of, like, I don't know if you notice, like, if you look here, but, like, I mean, well, we've got two gingers. That's kind of funny just in itself. <laughs> two gingers. It's fucking two gingers. We've got, a, we've, got a, we've got a lovely lady. We've got a Middle Eastern. This guy's name is Jose, but he's, he's Filipino. So he's actually Asian, but he kind of he kind of fit. We kind of fill a Hispanic and Asian boat with him. And, and, and we always, awesome. we had a black. And I love this like diversity of having like kind of like all this ethnic you know differences and backgrounds or whatever. So I was more like almost intentional about like I wanted a black guy in our band. I'm the stereotype white guy, and then everybody else is like hip and eclectic, you know? Like. Right, that is cool, man. That is cool. Um, what are your plan your plans for new album? Do you have any songs written already? Yeah, uh, most of them. I'm I've been writing like crazy. I've been so inspired the last few months, but uh, but yeah, probably about. I've got about nine solid ones. I at least want to have 11, but I've got about nine solid ones. But I never know. But I'm so far away from that process. Like, I'm not even going to start showing these songs to the band until, like, late summer next year. And then we'll work on them. We'll work. I need some time off, really, is why. I've been... It takes so much work, and I fund all these myself, yeah. so I do double, triple shows. I play music for a living. Yeah. I do cover songs acoustically everywhere, and sometimes with one or two of my other guys, but that's how I make my money. So sometimes I'll double up on shows on days, triple shows. And I've done a lot of that for the last like five years to fund these two records, oh. which are both paid off. 
and like each one of them had a pretty hefty price tag. <laughs> so yeah, vinyl is just like tape, man. Well, <laughs> well, the vinyl, but even just the recording process, the studio time, oh, and yeah. like you know, I'm, I'm um, paying. I'm how paying long tech. was how yeah. long was each? You know, from beginning to end till it came out, and you were done with the record completely. How long uh, did each take? War for Love was probably was probably like a solid year. Cause we recorded that like kind of in spurts. We didn't do it more, but the second one we did it kind of more grammed into one month. Except my drummer broke his arm oh, in the no. like right when we were getting we were like a week away from the week he was supposed to track and he fucking broke his arm in his sleep. And so then he was just... down for six weeks. So we had to reschedule for like a month. But we would have done it all in like a month. The second one. And then just wait for mixing, mastering, and you know, yeah, then yeah. getting vinyl, whatever. Okay. But the War for Love, the actual recording process, took close, like probably six months, and we were working on the songs for six months, and, and then mixing, and mastering. So everyone has a different process. The band we just talked to was like, you know, uh, talking about their album it was like two years they spent yeah. just working on that for, until it was completely done and over with. It's like, yeah. Well, we're getting we're getting better at it, but you, it's it's a lot of it's just experience and and you know time like put yeah. into it. You kind of learn each other. So I'm thinking this next one will be quicker, but because um, the second one was way quicker than the first. But yeah, so I I'm taking a year to kind of chill and like not work as hard, yeah. travel some. Right. Like, do some things I actually want to do because I was about to lose my fucking mind. Like, I was working so much. <laughs> like, and I love what I do, but it's yeah. still like, you just need downtime, you know? Yeah, man. So, so, so yeah, around like next summer, I want to start showing them the songs and then they'll learn them and, and we'll start getting ready to go into pre production and track them. I'm hoping 2020 release. 2020, that's cool. But, uh, 2020. But the new stuff. So it'll be two, every two years. We did 2016, 2018, and then we'll do 2020. Okay, yeah. Very cool. And, uh, 2020, that sounds crazy, right? It does, but man, we're almost in 2019, so know, like... like oh. it's, Time yeah. flies, it just doesn't stop. Yeah, man. <laughs> but I'm really excited about the new stuff. Like, it's cool. it's hitting hard, like, way better. <laughs> <laughs> never know right. And his neck. And his neck. And my neck. And the neck. And my neck. <laughs> that, is, that is really cool, man. I, I, I do like that. I do like I that. Think that's cool when they spin, too. That's one of the. Uh, what did you say? <laughs> that's <laughs> that's cool when they spin. spin. They do. Oh, like, oh, right? I, like you say, it, dude. <laughs> I mean, how often do you, do you see the tattoo look spinning? Cool like, they're spinning. <laughs> Look at that, man. Look at that. Look at the nice crow cool. spin. <laughs> Look that at the fucking crow, crow cool. spin. That is, that, that is cool. <laughs> Look at him go. Look, Look at him go. go. Look at him go. He's taking off. He's taking off in the same place. Yeah. <laughs> ka -ka, ka -ka. Yeah, right. That's not even the sound of crow. Yeah. <laughs> That's when it opens up. Ka -ka, ka -ka. Um, That's funny, man. Let's see. <laughs> Let's see. Let's, Let's see. see. Let's see. Yeah, like, what's the, uh, like, what's, like, uh, your uh, creative process like when it, like, becomes to, like, writing these songs? Is it, like, is it is it mainly you that brings the idea to the band that, that does Definitely. what that is? That, so cool. I bring the idea. Sometimes I have a direction. Sometimes I don't even much have a direction. I'm just kind of, like, I, I give my band plenty of space to create, which is, I think, a lot of reason they love being a part of it, because everyone gets to be very creative. That's cool. And, and so... So yeah, they'll just like um, a couple of this. Like I played a couple of new songs earlier, um, or whatever. I don't know where you air them in the podcast, but yeah, you know, no. we, taped, we taped them earlier. <laughs> right here, here today. <laughs> here today, <laughs> earlier today. Um, and like, I might just those are very those are very basic poppy songs. Like there's not anything too tricky about them. But I might be like, hey, in this one kind of have a pop feel, maybe some. Maybe some harder hitting, like a little bit of a hip hop beat feel in this section or something, you know. Like, but I'll just give them kind of an idea like that, yeah, like a general, and then yeah. just go with it. Yeah, sure. And then we get together and we practice, and everyone brings their own flavor. Everyone works That's together. Cool. It's beautiful watching them too, like the sax and the fiddle, like, like come up with little parts together or the lead or the guitar and yeah it's like just, you don't have much to criticize. You kind of like them taking it and doing. I really like them taking the reins. Yeah. Yeah. I even give them all. Um, it's not making any difference in their life right now because I mean I'm not making money off the music. <laughs> I, like I take most of the royalty credit, but like I've given if if anything ever did blow up, I've given them all like a certain small percentage of writing credit, so where they'll get they'll get stuff on the back end, you know, if something ever did. That's nice. I don't know the extent of that law thing. Was it Kanye West had Tr Donald Trump sign the mutant? Oh music yeah, he wasn't even there. I think. <laughs> 
but I, I, I'm curious. It should it should help us all get a little more money, but I mean it's not yeah. it's still not gonna probably help too much. Like yeah, little, right. it can't be guy. too like how much do they? I you ever heard of a uh, Wolf Wolf Peck? <laughs> They're like sounds made this up. funky band. Yeah, that's it. Wild. They're for this funky band. They have a really popular YouTube channel, but they. They released a Spotify album that was called Sleepify, and it was 30 second tracks, because that, that was what, like if you listened to it for 30 seconds, that counted as a listen, and you would get royalty, like paid for someone listening to 30 seconds of your song. They just released 12 tracks, 30 seconds blank, and told their fans to listen to it on repeat uh, throughout the night. So they made money on an album and it was like this whole deal where they, they just it's screwed up crazy. for Spotify. Sleepify. It's fun to get those. But I was like, that's a genius. That kind of loophole. Now, Sp oh you know, Spotify, God. I think, owed them like the sixteen or 20000 And it was supposed to fund one of their tours. So and they still did the tour. They got the money. But Spotify was like, no one, I don't know what they did to change their Weird. policy so yeah, people can't do that. Making anymore. sure there's something sonically on it or something yeah. anymore. It's like, oh, well, God forbid a band made money off their album and funded a tour. Like, <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> I, you know, they're just trying to make... Spotify make should have championed them been like, yeah, great idea. Great idea. Well, at least like, hey, yeah. you got us, touche. Way, yeah, yeah. way to reinvest in yourself, too. <laughs> and like, you know, keep making music. Like, that would have been a cool... They don't, I mean, they don't made, care the high. Many people get on Spotify. They didn't look at it that way. Right. Yeah, yeah right? <laughs> Yeah, and you got more exactly. You got more yeah. traffic on your fucking app now. These like, people are probably checking exactly. out other things on there. Exactly. Come on. Because they don't always want to listen to Silence. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, a silent album. Put that on. <laughs> so not putting anything on. Put like, that silent shit on. Silent show. Put that silent shit on. Yeah. It's too quiet right now. Put the silent album on. You put some music. You don't hear the music. It's that new Volt the pack. Groove. The groove. The groove. The groove. Um, it's, what are some of your biggest, most embarrassing on stage mistakes? <laughs> <laughs> Every time I get on stage, <laughs> I'm just, yeah. that's, that's the go to right there. Yeah, right. all of it. Every oh, time. I, yeah. Oh, God. So I was like, I don't oh, know. last night. <laughs> I'm, I'll just say, in general, I'm still a work in progress as a singer. And I just, man, sometimes I just hit some bad notes. I'm just like, ugh. It's, every time it's fucking embarrassing, yeah. but you can't go back. You know, yeah, <laughs> the note's like, out there. You just it. hope fewer people notice that one than notice the better notes. Right. It's like a comedian bombing, and you're just like, I don't know. Yeah. Just a bad night. Just the, just yeah. that one bad moment just had to deal with that. Yeah, I got to keep checking. I had a funny thing, but I do have a funny story. When I, from when I was a bass player, when I was like 22, 21 maybe, when I played with this, this one band, like I said, that was in for like 10 years. We were high energy on stage. Like we spent rehearsals choreographing shit sometimes, like <laughs> jumps and this thing, and everyone's spinning <laughs> oh here, and we're doing this. Like, and my first like year or two with them, I played barefoot. I was like, I'm super hippie, but at that point, I was actually less of a hippie, but I just never wore shoes, and like. I would so I'd wear flip flops and like I'd take them off on stage because I just liked the yeah. feeling of yeah, being there on stage. I don't know. So I did this jump in this place and I landed on something hard, but I wasn't paying attention because I was in the mo moment, just keep rocking, whatever. And then like another song or two goes by and it was kind of this low, dull throbbing pain that I was noticing. I was like, that still kind of hurts. I looked down, there's like blood everywhere. I landed on like a direct box, one of those direct boxes that for some. Whoever designed these, I don't know why, but for some reason there were these direct boxes that had these like thin metal edges that would come up past oh, yeah. the box. Oh, yeah. You know what I'm talking yeah. about? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, like you know, yeah. you know exactly what I'm talking. Yeah. About. Like what why? kind of dumb ass idea yeah. was that? Anyways, it was just some sharp edge waiting for someone to cut themselves. Yeah. It's like this, <laughs> but the playing field. Yeah, yeah, not, yeah, not necessary, yeah, not like, necessary. <laughs> and I landed on it and didn't notice, and there was a gash in my fucking foot, and I was bleeding everywhere. But I would have pants on, and it bled all over my pants. And all over the carpet on the stage, and I was like, "You guys, I gotta go back here and take care of something." Yeah, jeez, hold up. That's Rock an intense up. show, rocking it out. Yeah, yeah man. Oh, like, yeah. show must go yeah. on. Yeah. That's why I said the next song before we started. I noticed. Like, <laughs> God, finish right. <laughs> yeah, no, yeah. I think I noticed in the middle of the song, but I finished it. Yeah, out, right. And I went, then I went backstage. Like, <laughs> oh shit, that's funny, man. Um, <laughs> what is your spirit animal? <laughs> mm. My spirit animal. Um, I, man, 
I have a hedgehog. I have a pet hedgehog. <laughs> <laughs> that's I, cool. I even have a tattoo of the little oh, wow, right that's there because cool. I love her so much. Um, I don't know. She's kind of my, she's kind of my spirit animal, I suppose. She's cool. she's just my little buddy. She's really not. She's a bitch, and she's <laughs> she, well, she's my little buddy. She's really not my spirit. Animal. <laughs> she's, yeah. a, she's a bitch, man. She's so like th- thinks she's so fierce and she's. <laughs> Does she just like she gets angry? Put the claws out. She no, she's really with chill with me actually. She loves me. She'll just basically get in my hands and just like nuzzle up and fall asleep. She doesn't. But. She trusts me. But like they're terrified of everything. They're terrified of loud noises, bright lights. They can't hardly see or hear oh. other people, like whatever. So just other things, other stimulus. She's right. just like anything that's not a dog or a cat. Yeah, it's just they can build like a special relationship. Like yeah, it's one, different than that. And then they're just like freaked out by everything else. Yeah. <laughs> and so she's been, she's done that, but she's fun. She's just a fun little pet. And she, uh, and girls, like, like girls really dig her. Yeah. So she's <laughs> kind of my spirit animal in that way. Yeah, right. <laughs> I have a hedgehog. Oh, she's yeah. girls really dig her and she loves boobs. So, like, yeah. so maybe she is my spirit animal. <laughs> <laughs> that's <is> awesome. <laughs> That's it. Well, all right. We'll end on that. Do you have uh, Do you have any any shows coming up soon? Yeah, uh, one big one. I don't know when this will air, but uh, this weekend. This, this is weekend, okay. this probably won't air before then. But Saturday, October twentieth, at the Curtain Club. Really excited about that show. Nice. We'll actually be on Good Day Texas on Fox Four this Wednesday morning at nine forty five, promoting that, nice. doing oh, a cool, song. Cool dude, and. Um, um, but then, like, I'm trying to think. December. This will air before December for sure. <laughs> yeah. We definitely have December 15th at Six Springs Tavern in Richardson, which is a really kick-ass venue. Very cool. Check it out sometime if you ever get a chance. I think I've heard of that. Six Springs. Yeah, everyone's Richardson. been playing there now. The guy that owns it's from Austin, he's so chill and, like, okay. loves. He, cool, cool. He'll he do on a Friday night, he'll bring in two bands, pay them, and wants them to play just original music. Like, an hour and a half set. And wow. he just wants original music. He really yeah, doesn't even cool. like covers. He like he's yeah, like, don't play awesome. covers. Play original music. Cool. <laughs> like, we animal. just we just played there this last Friday and loved it. But we'll be back there December fifteenth. So I definitely want to get people out to that show. Host some uh, open mic nights. Yeah, I host three open mics a week. Uh, right now, I'm every Monday, Wednesday, Thursday, Monday in Plano at Ringo's Pub. Wednesday and Tudas in the West End in Dallas. Thursday at Tees Bar in Louisville. Very nice. That's fun. Busy, yeah. busy man. I do a lot of shows. Um, social media. Drew's Peace Crush. Drew's Peace Crush. That's Drew with two O's. Um, and really, you can go to droo.co. Drew.co. Droo.co. And it has links to everything. That's that's our website. It has links to everything. Alright, cool. Thanks man. for coming out. Man, thanks for having me. You guys are super chill. I love everything. Yes. The, the vibe, the atmosphere, all your equipment's top notch. Hey, love the you, show. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. See you guys next time. Peace. Cool, man.